Hey everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents under the umbrella of Good Parenting, Brighter Children. Today we're going to talk about kind of a controversial subject and uh, the 21st century it really shouldn't be a controversial subject. There's enough research to support what I'm going to talk about today and that is um, what tech toys are doing to your kids' brains. All right, let me tell you a few, a little bit of history here. I don't know if any of you have read Amusing Ourselves to Death by Neil Postman. He's written a, a number of different books about education and so forth. But um, he talks about two, in this foreword, he talks about two interesting books. One was 1984 by George Orwell, and the other one is Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. All right, so everybody that was uh, around there had, who had ever read 1984, we were all in fear and trepidation over what was going to happen in 1984. And of course, it came and went with nothing really um, happening at all. But a lot of educators feel like there are certain similarities between Huxley's book and Orwell's book. But this is what Neil Postman has to say, because this fits totally into what I'm going to talk about, uh, the dangers of too much technology. He said, what Orwell feared were those who would ban books, but what Huxley feared was that there would be no reason to ban a book because no one would want to read a book. That's our age, dear. Orwell feared that those who would deprive us who would deprive us of information, and Huxley feared those who would give us so much that we would be reduced to passivity and egotism. Do you know that information is coming at us at warp speed? There is so much information that is pretty much people are just shutting down because it's way too much information. It's way too much overload. Orwell feared that the truth would be concealed from us. Huxley feared that the truth would be drowned in a sea of irrelevance. Okay, so that is pretty much what has happened in our information age. An interesting thing happened in 1996. I read an article, actually, it was a publication by Dr. John Leinhardt at the University of Texas in Houston. And in it, he talked about, this is 1996. This is before the age of the internet. So he was talking about kids who spent too much time in front of video games, too much time on the computer doing whatnot. And he was talking about how this was affecting them with visual perception. Now, visual perception is how you and I and your kids learn, okay? They can't learn without visual perception is how they perceive their visual world. If their teacher calls them up and says, okay, I need you to take this note to the principal's office, and they have problems with visual perception, they're not going to know how to get to the principal's office. If the teacher writes something on the board and says, okay, I want you to copy all of this on the board and put it onto your, into your notebook so that you have it, we're going to refer to it numerous times this week. The idea of being able to copy what is on the board and put it onto a page paper here, up here and down here. If they have visual perception issues, they're not going to be able to do it. Visual perception has to do with every aspect of learning. And Dr. Leinhardt was talking and giving statistics and research of how too much technology, too many video games at that particular time was affecting these children's brains with uh, visual perception. Well, now there is in uh, 20. 18, there is tons and tons of information and research and books that have been written about all of the problems now that are happening because parents and children are glued to their tech devices, particularly their phones. One thing that has happened is nobody has an attention span anymore. Nobody can concentrate on anything. In fact, it was just recently said that goldfish have a longer attention span than we do. It's nine seconds for them. It's six seconds for us. I always find it amusing when I go on people's blogs and I talk to them and say, okay, how many minutes or seconds do people spend? Usually the average, if they're lucky, a minute, a minute and a half. How can you glean any information by spending that short of time? I've seen, we've all seen people as they flip through on their phones going fast, 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 fast. They're not really looking or focusing or paying attention to any one particular thing. They're just scrolling through as fast as they can. What all of that has caused is a rewiring of the brain. And so our brains are now being rewired for short, little, tiny sound, out, sound bites of information. And that's not how school is. School is you have to have an attention span. You have to be able to sustain that attention span from one subject to the next. The other thing is they're not being able to absorb the information that they hear. They're not being able to even remember information that they hear and that they learn in school. There's, uh, I've written several different um, blogs about this, about dumping your tech, to tech 
toys and at least having a lot of really strict restrictions on tech toys it's a huge problem to compare contrast another thing is I when my book came out in 1999 I was giving a lot of lectures because I included some of Leinhard's works in my uh, book and the importance of having your children learn a musical instrument because that will actually help them with attention and concentration that will actually build a better bigger bigger better brain that will actually help them with visual perception so I was talking about this to a lot of parents, a lot of, um, I was a keynote speaker and a feature speaker at a number of different universities, and I brought up, and this was 1999, I said, you know, you've got to have controls on this. There were a lot of people that took offense to what I said and no longer listened to me because they said, technology is the greatest thing since frozen bread. How could there be anything wrong with technology? Well, there can always be too much of a good thing. I love chocolate. I like to have a few chocolate chips every day. But if I ate chocolate for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, there would be a problem with that. So there can be problems with too much of a good thing. And it is changing your children's brain for the worse. When you get books for your children, get them an actual book. Forget about the stupid ebooks. You know, because they have to. We live in a three-dimensional world. They are looking at a flat two-dimensional screen. You want them to be able to hold that book, smell that book. Do you know that books have a smell to them? They are incredible. They're luscious. They're delicious. You want them to be able to write in the margins. I, in all of my books, I have all different pages that I've written on the very front page. I write in the margins. I highlight. And people say, well, you can still highlight an ebook. Yeah, but do you really want to cozy up at night uh, to an ebook, or do you want to have that wonderful book that you've grown has become your very best friend? And your child can have that experience with a book. Your child can have that experience with learning. There is nothing wrong with technology. It's just the amount of technology that is changing our children's brains, and that is something that you and I both do not want. You can go on my blog. I, different, I give different ways of how you can reset the brain. I'm actually going to use this as one of the tips that I talk about. But here is a quote from Steven Spielberg about technology. Technology can be our best friend, and technology can be the biggest party pooper in our lives. It interrupts our own story. It basically interrupts everything. It interrupts our ability to have a thought or a daydream or to imagine something wonderful. Why? Because we're too busy bridging the walk from the cafeteria back to the office on the cell phone. People are glued to the cell phone. If you are one of those people that are glued to the cell phone, then try this and try this with your kids. For seven days, go off all technology. See if you can do it. It's worse than trying to go off seven days of sugar, a lot of people tell me. And sugar, they say, is as addictive as cocaine. So being able to go off on tech toys for seven days, that's going to take a big amount of effort. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow.